Neji has asked me to say a few words today on the topic, the love of a master makes us all equal. Ishwaji used to say that the master is like a philosopher's stone. Philosopher's stone can turn base materials into gold. The master is a philosopher's stone, but he doesn't turn us into gold. He doesn't come to make us better people. He comes to make us exactly like himself. In that way, in that oneness with him, we all become equal. There are a number of ways that he showed that to us. I would see disciples that may meet him one time, be overwhelmed with love for him, and that love would blossom and grow over time. It was almost sometimes the opposite of worldly love, where you meet someone and then it seems to plateau after a certain amount of years. But with the master, it grows and grows and grows and heightens over time. Somebody might meet him once or twice. Somebody might have been with him for 30, 40 years, and that love would develop over time. But in the end, time isn't real anyway, and we all end up utterly and completely in love and devotion for our master. Another way that I saw in the presence of Ishwaji how love would make us all equal is that people from all kinds of backgrounds, spiritual paths, uh, races, genders, nationalities, ages would come and congregate with Ishwaji. It didn't matter your politics. It didn't matter your views on social issues. They were all across the board. This is distinct from other spiritual paths that I have been on earlier in my life. I was always ama amazed how it didn't matter to Ishwaji who you were, where you came from. That love was total and it was given to everybody equally. Another way that love, well, his love made us all equal. Another way that makes us all equal in his love is that we are moved to want to do things for him out of love. We simply want to be with him, we want to give to him because we love him and it's not a burden. And that's, in my experience, what we call seva. We do things that we might not have otherwise wanted to do, um, that might not even fit in with what we think our skill set is or what our desires, desires are. He, uh, with the master, it, didn't, it would not matter what your background was. You might find yourself lifting one brick like Ishwar Diyu when he was, did when he was a small boy, carrying one brick as the Dara was constructed. For him, was the same seva as somebody bringing a cart that might be carrying a hundred bricks. He told the story of the American man who shows up at the train station getting ready to see Baba Sawan Singh, great master at the Dara. And he's met by a man in rags who offers to carry his bags. The man carry, takes the, the wealthy American man to the Dara, carries his bags, and when they arrive, the American man says, here is one dollar. This is going to be valuable for you, an American dollar. And the, the man says, no, sir, I don't take tips. And later on, this American man is in the satsang, somebody sitting next to him, they're chatting. And on the stage, he notices that the man earlier who had came to take, in, take his bags was dressed very nicely in a very uh, clean and well-pressed suit, sitting up on the, on the stage with a great master. He asked the person next to him, this is the man that carried my bags this morning. Who is he? And, he, and the other man replied, don't you know, he's a multi-billionaire industri industrialist. This man, despite his wealth, despite his background, was wearing dirty clothes and rags and performing the same seva as everyone else. Another way in which the love of a master makes us all equal. On a personal level, I've experienced that Ishwaji remains present with me and with so many other satsangis, despite the fact that he is no longer in his physical body. 
we all have equal, eternal, and constant access to him. That is the most powerful way in which the Master's love makes us all equal. Thank you for listening.